Hello and welcome to our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwartz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold Learning. And here at Gold, we are in the process to uh, prepare for a new lecture pack that we have here. It's the Gold Breastfeeding Medicine, Advancing Your Level of Care Lecture Pack. And here with me is one of our speakers for this lecture pack, Dr. Sarah Riestremsen. Welcome. Thanks. It's wonderful to have you here today. Um, and uh, before we start talking about the presentation that you will have as part of the lecture pack, tell our listeners a little bit about you. So first of all, where in the world are you? So I'm um, in Washington, D.C. Um, I can't really get into the politics of Washington, D.C., but that, that's where <laughs> I am. Um, I came out here for college um, back in the late 90s, um, really enjoyed um, the, the city and the energy here, so decided to stay for medical school for internship, residency, fellowship, um, all of my training, and um, now faculty at uh, Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. Beautiful, wonderful. And I know also that uh, with that impressive background that you have, you're also an acupuncturist. Is that true? Yes, yes. So <laughs> I have a, um, a now thriving um, acupuncture clinic that I do once a week for children, um, a lot of teenagers, but, but some kids. Yeah. I, I definitely have a, um, a cohort of young kids who actually really love acupuncture. So um, I do that one day a week, mostly for chronic pain problems, but also in the inpatient setting for, um, for nausea, for pain, for dizziness, for all kinds of things. So it's, it's pretty exciting part of my, uh, part of what I get to provide here at Children's Hospital. Beautiful. That's absolutely amazing. How did you even have time for all that? You know, full, full just, medical degree and yeah. everything. And then, <laughs> no, it just kind of fell into my lap. Our hospital a few years ago um, decided that it would be worth training someone in it. And I said, oh, pick me, pick yeah. me. Yeah. Um, and so we did it. And I, I love it. It's a, it's a really nice um, part of what I can do as an anesthesiologist, actually. It brings a, a nice balance to, the, to my practice. Beautiful. Love it. Absolutely nice. And the kids, are usually little kids or small kids, they're always needles. So I'm afraid of needles. Yes. How do you work with that with uh, the little ones? Um, I can't tell you how many times I've like <laughs> taken a needle and been like, look, it's fine, and stuck it into my hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, ugh. Um, but, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of persuasion that I have to do. Um, uh -huh. And I have other techniques and things I can use. I can use a laser. I use cups. I use little sticker needles. Um, sometimes I bribe them with candy and I'm not even kidding. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but once they try it, most of the time they love it and they will willingly come back for more. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Wonderful. That's great. Uh, so it's a well-rounded background that you have there as well. Um, you're a pediatrician. You have that as a background. Now, um, my question was, and I don't know if that applies to you, if you ever use acupuncture with um, the moms, the breastfeeding moms, because this is um, talking about breastfeeding here in this uh, scenario for gold. Yeah. Are you so ever using it for that too? I have not yet. Um, there is a, a pretty good body of evidence that, that acupuncture can help with, um, with milk supply and with pain. Um, and I've right. done it sort of for, um, not in a clinical setting, but for, for friends. I've done it on infants, mm -hmm. actually. Um, a few times there's special techniques you can do with infants that don't involve using big needles. Um, it's one thing we are looking into doing is something we could provide for some of our mothers of babies in our NICU. We are sort of in the initial stages of figuring out what would be the best focus for that. Um, but our lactation consultant is very interested in it and seeing what we can do with our moms who are at the hospital with their infants. So it's in, the, it's in the pipeline. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Wonderful. And, and when you are doing this, please come back to Gold because we want to hear <laughs> sure. from you how it's going and, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, what the results are and what success rates you have. Uh, it, would be, it would be a really fascinating topic for us here as well. Sure. Now, let's talk about the topic that you are presenting with yes. uh, here at uh, the effects of labor, analgesia, and anesthesia on breastfeeding. Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah. So, um, so my clinical practice right now is mostly centered on, on, um, on children, infants and children with anesthesia. Um, but I have a pretty strong interest in labor anesthesia. Um, was always one of my passions during residency and figuring out how we could help our moms breastfeed because I, moms who are, are um, using our services as anesthesiologists um, and in seeing what we could do to mitigate any possible effects of what we're doing to help them through labor, does that impact their ability to start breastfeeding well and their baby's ability to breastfeed? So um, 
it became something I was interested in and did a lot of research on, have written some papers on it. Um, and it's still kind of one of those topics where there is not fantastic evidence um, with mm -hmm. regards to epidurals. Um, but it's, it's something that I think there's a lot of research that still needs to be done and a lot of questions still to be answered in, in terms of what we're doing and, and how that affects babies and moms after mm -hmm. birth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I would like to see more uh, research on that as well, because, you know, there's uh, many different opinions floating around on, oh, this is absolutely not affecting the baby at all. Others uh, claim the baby gets more drowsy or there might be other issues with that um, than for the baby. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see more research in that area as well to, to see how what, what can be what are the effects and what can be done. So um, so so tell us a little bit about how does that look in your daily day to day in your practice then? So in terms of, of um, so anesthesia and breastfeeding mm -hmm. sort of in general. Yeah. So so again, most of my practice right now is um, is with babies and, and yeah. children. So uh, frequently, it's it's well, not frequently. Every day when I care for a baby under the age of two, I always ask the mom, are, "Is your baby breastfeeding?" Um, and if they uh -huh. are, we sort of do things not a little bit differently, but we make sure that as I bring a baby to a recovery area, um, that our nurses know, "Do not feed this baby anything." You bring the mom back, and you you get them breastfeeding. So it's been a very um, sort of a, a not really a change in how we do things or a QI initiative or anything but it's something that we're really trying to focus on is that our moms who are breastfeeding babies um, that are having anesthesia having surgery that we really preserve their ability to do that we don't give the babies mm -hmm. anything else that we follow our NPO guidelines um, and everything related to that to just making sure babies are able to breastfeed moms are able to breastfeed um, and have air areas to pump it's sort of a, an ongoing um, thing but it's part of my daily practice now um, and how I how I approach these families. Absolutely. If there's one little nugget of wisdom here you could share with our listeners about the topic, is there anything you've learned or seen that you would like to share here? Well, I think, you know, with, with regards to, to labor analgesia um, in terms of pain medications during, during labor and delivery, I think what we need to really focus on is meeting moms where they are. We can't, mm -hmm. uh, we can't blame um, after birth something that a mom chose to do during labor for any of their breastfeeding difficulties. You're just laying the groundwork for guilt and mm -hmm. um, maybe mistrust for further dealing with healthcare professionals. So I think anything that we do during labor to support a mom needs to be taken into account after they mm -hmm. have their baby with regards to breastfeeding. So I think we need to meet moms where they are and, and not have breastfeeding really be mm -hmm. the driving factor as to whether or not they're going to use pain medication during birth, because we can, mm -hmm. we can help moms breastfeed. Um, we just need to understand what they had happen during labor that may impact right. it and then work to, to mitigate some of those, those effects. Yeah, meet moms where they are. That sounds wonderful. Well, thank you yeah. so much for uh, spending time with us here today talking about the presentation and your amazing work there in the field. Thanks. <laughs> and to our listener, this presentation is part of the Gold Breastfeeding Medicine Advancing Your Level of Care Lecture Pack, and that will be available starting November 9th. That's just around the corner. So if you're interested to find out more about this presentation here today and the other presentations in the lecture pack, please visit goldobstetrics.com and goldlearning.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye for now.